Peace. Hi tribe, I know I don't usually do this, but I'm letting you spend the day with me. And today I'm at Power FM here to speak to Bobby Malloy, someone who I love so much. And we're going to be talking about the art of communication. How do you network with people? How do you build a brand? How do you make sure that you know how to converse with people in spaces that you're not comfortable in? So join us because we're going to be dropping a lot of gems as usual. And we'll see what happens. Lebo Lion in studio. I mean, if you are an excellent purveyor of small talk, give us a call at 0861 and let us know how you do it. If you need some help with it as well, perhaps you can call in and ask for that. You're having a giggle here, Lebo. I'm sure you're very good at small talk. Look, I haven't always been good at small talk, but I, I raised a question on Instagram before our conversation. I was asking people, is there such a thing as small talk? Ooh. Right? I think we have to start Let's there. Let's start there. Let's start there. So I personally don't believe there's something called small talk. Right. I think that when we call it small talk, we minimize how important that interaction is with the person you've just met or somebody mm -hmm. you're meeting in an environment where you could unearth some opportunities, right? So it's not small talk. For me, it is your first impression. It's the first impression somebody gets of you. So it's probably one of the most important conversations you'll have with somebody. Mm. And we need to take that seriously. It's big talk. <laughs> big talk. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so you're talking about small talk um, and you say it's big talk. Mm -hmm. So so is do we maybe have an instinctive understanding of how important it is? And that's why we keep having conversations and coaching sessions and you yeah. know bridges to overcome maybe even the fear of small talk. I don't think we understand how important it is. I think that a lot of the time we find ourselves in environments where we feel like we need to do something. And so we're like, mm. okay, how do I connect with people? I just talk to them. So I seem like I'm part of this community. So I seem like I'm doing something. But if you were really intentional about your time, your energy, who you're engaging with, then you would take every interaction seriously. And wow. I know that sounds really stressful like oh so every time i leave the house i must have a strategy and i must do this and this but that's not what i mean what i mean is you must understand that everyone you encounter has value right, right. so and you don't know who they are so every time you're interacting with somebody that could be a possible opportunity relationship something and you need to take that seriously and i don't mean take it seriously by making it a, a work thing every time you go leave the house it's a job no what i mean is be intentional about how you connect with others, right. right? Be intentional about what you're saying to them. And the only way that will work is if you're authentic and you're true to yourself. Let's describe what authenticity means as well. Yeah, that's a good one because that, that, that's a big word right now. Everybody says be authentic, mm. but what does it really mean, right? So being authentic is being true to yourself. It doesn't mean be reckless or just say whatever you want to say. It means show up as an honest version of yourself. What are you good at? What do you like talking about? Who are you? Be that in every space that okay. you're in so you can connect with the right people, mm. right? You're not going to be able to connect with everybody and that is okay. But if you're inauthentic, then you're going to have small talk, which means you're not going to connect with anybody because you're just talking to them for the sake of talking. But if you really want to have that big talk where you leave the house and you're not wasting your time because you're engaging with people who are aligned to you, then you're going to find a lot of value in every conversation you have with somebody. So what does that mean in practicality? And they go down to when to arrive at the event, what <laughs> kinds of salutations to make. Let's talk about it. It's not that serious. So when ah, I say that, okay. I mean, you don't have to use your best English or wear the best outfit. It's not like that. Yeah. You have to ask yourself, if I'm going to, let's say, a radio interview with Bubby, how do I need to show up to get the results that I want out of the interview? If it means you need to wear in your brand colors or whatever, then wear that. Right. If it means you have to prepare how to speak for the interview because you might be shy behind the mic, then do that, right? That's how you do that thing. That's how you speak and you make the experience fruitful for yourself. And if it's a networking situation, mm. then you go in there. I always say to people, firstly, have an elevator pitch for whatever you do. 
right because you need to know how to articulate the things that you do if you can't how do you get people to see your value first of all but secondly research the event that you're going to so what is the event about who's going to be there what are they posting on their socials so you just get a sense of what's going to be required to you in terms of energetically like how do i need to behave how am i going to be required to move what i need to dress like etc mm, mm. then when you arrive there try to at least pinpoint two or three people whose stories you know because there's there'll always be people who are known at an event and who you want to engage with make sure you've researched those people mm. And the reason why that's important is because then you can have a meaningful conversation with them and not ask them the same old questions that everybody's asking them that they're bored of answering. And they know that if you ask them that question, you're just there because you want something. But if you're actually there to engage with somebody, you're going to learn about them and maybe their hobbies are horses. So you'll approach them with the joke about a horse or whatever the case may be you know what i mean but you're breaking the ice because the first time you meet somebody it's a cold call it's like yes, a cold call they yes. don't know you and they don't need to be nice to you because who are you so you need to be the one who opens yourself up and says i want to get to know you and i've actually researched some things about you it sounds creepy but it's not because when you're engaging with that person they're not going to sit there and think oh this person researched my love for horses well you're not saying that you're yeah. not saying High level, I, I researched research. exactly. You're just gonna go, oh my gosh, horse joke, horse joke, exactly. Horse joke, yeah. And then yeah. you start to connect. And even in that, be authentic. Like, don't tell a horse joke the way Lebo would, tell it the way you would. If you don't know how to tell jokes, don't tell a joke, say something else, but be true to yourself and how you operate because it may not always be you might see someone and identify them, but they may not be the right person for you to connect with. Yeah. So, be authentic. Okay, so I'm asking on such a granular level because yeah. I do know that there are people who operate in this world who don't really have a lot of that, they call them soft skill yes, ability. And yes. this is really what we're talking about, right? Yeah. I mean, even down to having an elevator pitch, it's so vital because yeah. you may have the billion dollar idea that's going to solve load shedding, water crises, etc. But if you don't know how to pitch that, yes in a way that's engaging in 50 seconds or less <laughs> how are you going to operate so so you know that's vitally important yeah who teaches this stuff people like me yeah. teach th these kinds of things but also you know what i found is that people like to do things before it's their time to do the thing so what i mean by that is when i'm teaching leaders for example how to build personal brands or i'm teaching people with businesses how to build a business brand mm. the one thing that they do is they have this vision for their brand and they want that vision to unearth itself now so yes you can think like a big brand but today you're a small brand okay so you need to operate like what you are today even though your heart and your vision is for the future you understand you're going to be a big big brand right but that's where the so authenticity comes that's in, where the authenticity yeah. comes in so what a lot of people will do is they go to spaces before they're ready for the space and then they're like oh nobody wants to listen to my elevator ele elevator pitch and you're like yes they won't because it's not your time to be in that space. Mm. Let your business mature. Let your brand mature. The more brand equity you have, whether you're a personal brand or a business brand, the easier it is for you to maneuver around spaces. The way you build brand equity for yourself or your business is through showing people what you can do. So that's time. You do the work. You show the world that it works. And then you build brand equity and people start to trust you. And then small talk doesn't become so daunting because people actually have a sense of who you are. And you're not engaging with a stranger. Yes. And it makes it much easier. So you can have the big talk. You can actually pitch yourself because they're going to ask you, I'm curious about what you do. I've seen it, but I don't really understand. Boom. Then you've got them. But there's some places where you go where you won't be able to pitch because it's just not the right environment or the conversation never leads itself there. But don't force the pitch either because you're wasting your time. But there is still value then in having these engagements. Yes, but you have to be mindful. So what I mean is, depending on the level that you're at, what you're trying to achieve, you should also have an events calendar. 
where you're identifying the events that really fit your brand or your business at the point that it's at. Mm. I think too many people go to too many things that are that don't fit what they're trying to do. So they have to engage in small talk because they realize that they're not really connecting with anyone. There's no not much value there and there's no purpose. Yeah. So why am I here? Okay, let me try. You okay, know, okay. networking is futile if you're going there just because you think people are there and maybe there's an opportunity. Mm. You have to be more strategic about it. So I'm Label Line, I'm a marketer, I help leaders and entrepreneurs. I go to spaces where there are leaders and entrepreneurs. I don't have to be at I don't know the the I don't I'm trying to think of an event like a a kiddies party half the time. You yeah, get what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't think of one right now, yeah. but I have to be strategic about where I spend my time and where I want to go. Like people always say to me, "Are you going to the summers?" <laughs> And I always go, I am not a Kwaito artist. Exactly. Why would I go to this? Why would I go? Exactly. I've been seen it, but yes. you know, the, the, it isn't strategically necessarily a space to put yourself into yeah. unless it uh, does something for your business. All right, so let's talk a little bit more. Mpo, I see you on the line. We can take your voice notes as well on 083-303-7093. How to succeed at the big, important thing called small talk <laughs> stick around <laughs> all right it's about 12 minutes to go until two o'clock we're talking small talk and uh, overcoming you know kind of social cues and barriers um, and making a networking session or any event that you attend of value for you and the brand that you are building. We've got our guest award-winning digital marketer, Lebo Lion, in studio with us. And Paul, you've called in from Randburg. How are you doing today? Good, how are you guys? Great, thank you. So tell us your story of small talk. Yeah, mm. so the importance of small talk. That's mm. where I was Wow. Wow. Gotcha. <laughs> that was the link to puff you into the next position. Paul, thank you very, very much for giving us that insight. It, it, you know, there's value to what Paul's saying, right? Yes. About having those conversations and kind of treating everybody with a measure of uh, respect, high regard. I think that's yes. also in our Ubuntu ethic as people, but to mm. keep that top of mind. It does, though, bring the other element of Fridays at the pub, yes. of, you know, maybe there's a drinking culture at to this uh, workplace or in that particular industry or whatever that kind of culture is. How important is it, if, if that's not what you do and who you are, to still plug yourself into that? I think it's important. You know, we're moving into a world where the people who are going to win are the people who are very honest about who they are, what they know how to do, where they want to be. And too often, I mean, the, the old way of working is you find a company, they offer you a job and you fit in. You find a way to fit in, you find a way to mold yourself to the culture. But after COVID, what we saw was that companies were ready, ready to let go of people who they didn't find that valuable. The people who were trying to fit in instead of naturally just fitting in. Mm. So if you want to survive in a world where a lot of things are unpredictable, where there's AI taking a lot of jobs, then you need to be irreplaceable. And the only way you can be is if you're truly and authentically yourself. So it, even in that situation that Paul was describing, somebody else would have said, but this person smokes weed yeah. or smokes no yeah. we'll never hire this person so he's lucky that that connection worked out for him sure. but for most people that would have been a no would have been a red flag just a social connection 
So I think that you need to be in environments mm. that also fit your values. And you need to be true to yourself. You need to live with an abundance mindset and know yeah. that what's meant for you is going to come. So the more you position yourself for what's truly for you, the less you'll find yourself in spaces you're not meant to be in. If right. you don't drink, don't go to a place where people drink. It doesn't matter if the company culture is drinking. If it's not for you, you don't belong in that company. That's it. Right? Stop forcing things. Nobody likes that and you can see it over time. <laughs> Stop forcing yourself yes. to fit into something or a space that isn't a fit for you. Yes. Which can be a little bit daunting sometimes if you don't have... Um, a mentality that says what's meant for me will be for me. If you're living at Absolutely. scarcity level, yeah, it's tough to navigate these spaces. A lot of the time, the people who are living in scarcity, and this will be controversial, aren't people who would even engage in networking. They're people who are sending CVs, waiting for a recruiter to call them. They're not actively going out and chasing the opportunity once you're engaging in small talk you're somebody who's actively going out okay. and chasing the opportunity so already that says a lot about your mindset mm. right and you understand the cost of actively going out yes. and chasing the opportunity so over time you're going to realize that you need to be more strategic about it and i'm not saying you know overthink it and if you go to these spaces you will get opportunities you could get it at the pub you could get it at the hospital but what i'm saying is even mentally be prepared for the fact that every interaction with somebody could be an opportunity. But I think that that's actually the key. Yes. That whenever you leave your house. Yes. That is your mindset. Yes. And you know what it is that you are after in life. In yes. Jail. Yes. Not just on that Tuesday you have three things to do at the shops. Yeah. No, no, no. In general, Absolutely. I'm open to this. Yes. Essentially, everything that you are and everything that you say is a pitch to the world. Right. As soon as you leave the house, how you're dressed, how you speak, who you're with, everything is your small talk. And that's why it's not small talk, it's big talk. Yes. Let's you know. have a listen to this uh, voice note on 0833 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Mandla, I so relate in the biggest way, and I've been telling you off the air level. You know, this idea of networking and 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 making these social interactions, and Mandla used that word introvert he's mm -hmm. an introvert mm -hmm. which usually just means that you get your energy and life and your recharge from being alone mm -hmm. but it can also mean that perhaps you find social interacting a little bit challenging so talk to us about what Mandela had to say i think so i'm also an introvert by the way i'm not this extroverted person i love being on my own and I also experience anxiety. So being on stages, which is what I do for a living, <laughs> being around people, even when people want to come hug me, it's still a bit of a daunting thing. But I love it. I appreciate the support. It's just not in my natural way of existing for me to be comfortable with that. And that's why you have to have a strategy about how you want to show up in the mm. world. Because it allows you to teach yourself how to communicate your boundaries with people. And you have to understand that networking, engaging with people, you have the power right if somebody approaches you and you don't like their approach you can tell them but you need to be strategic about how you tell people things because you also need to walk around in the world believing that people have good intentions if somebody is coming towards you and they're saying what do you do they probably just want to connect with you and they're also nervous and they don't know what to say so they feel like talking about work could be the the easiest thing to do you know they're just not phrasing it in a way that works for you so find other ways to bring people back so you can also feel comfortable okay so if someone were to ask me what do you do i'd say you know that's an interesting question but can i actually show you something very cool online to help answer that question of yours and maybe i'll show them a video of something then we'll talk about that video and i'll say i do something like that 
you know so it's not Ooh. me actually saying this is what i do this is who i am we're having an engagement now and that person changes their tone they change their attitude towards me and we have a more fulfilling and fruitful interaction that's fascinating yeah mandla and the mandlas out there who feel the same <laughs> yeah. please try these approaches yeah the next time someone comes and says so what do you do mm -hmm. assume positive intent yes in the conversation and then find an artistic way to then open up a conversation mm. not just like a tennis match yes what do you do this is what i do and mm. you and you yeah so so try that and i'd love to hear feedback on that it's like um socializing school thank you it is and Bobby, if you're not comfortable with someone and you feel a bad vibe cut it honor you that. know yeah honor that don't stick with it because lebu said every opportunity every interaction could be an opportunity Trust your intuition. It's usually always right, but also understand when you're operating from a place of fear yes. and anxiety versus intuition, which are two different things. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we're talking about big talk, small talk, those um, necessary conversations that you have in all of the spaces that we operate in. I mean, this happens uh, at school drop-off, this a measure of small talk. Mm -hmm. This happens when you're um, in the line at uh, the bank, there's a measure of small talk. <laughs> and then, of course, at networking events and in the office space. So we'll take your calls on 0861 Nine eight seven triple zero. The top of Nalo is on the line. Hello. Hi. I hear the guy. Hey. Go ahead. clubs you're going to where you <laughs> walk out double my three hundred thousand because give us three hundred Nolo, thank you very much for sharing those two stories. We're going to find out what's happening in the very latest Power News and then we'll get our guest, award winning digital marketer Lebo Lyons, comment on uh, what the clock Nolo has to say. Tato, Tabo, I see you and the voice notes after this, your two o'clock Power News. Power News. The top stories at the Sour, the Pretoria.
It's Power Lunch on Power 98.7. What a fascinating conversation. How to succeed at small talk. And uh, yeah, before we went to the news headlines um, or the bulletin, we spoke to Lutloho Nalo, who told us his two stories as an entrepreneur. He loves going out. He loves spending money. He's talked about popping bottles, looking really sharp. <laughs> but over and above that, meeting people at clubs and being open to having conversations, then telling his story and being able then to garner backing for his businesses but there are a couple of things that came up there for me, um, Lebo, and you'll comment what you'd like to comment. But he spoke a bit about going to the toilet and then he bumped into his other guy in the toilet. And then, you know, somebody sitting on their own and he asked to join. And I just thought about how great that is to, to open yourself up to those kinds of conversations. But how does it work with gender dynamics? When you're out in public as a woman, as a man, there are a lot of different nuances to how we interact with each other. Yeah, I mean, you're asking a really important question. How does it work with gender dynamics? And I think that we cannot, you know, be unfair and not speak about the inequality and da da da, da in society sure. and the gender-based violence. And da, da, da. We know this happens in South Africa and we've got one of the highest cases of all of these things. So it's important for women to be safe, yes. Mm. What I will say is that if you have a business or you have a brand and you have a vision for that business or brand, right? You have a plan for how you want it to grow. Mm. And so you will do that thing of having the lists of where you want it to be, where you think you need to go, da, 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 da. And I think a lot of the time, at least in my experience, I've seen that women tend to think that the power only lies in other men. Mm. And for me personally, the people who really helped me elevate are other women. So they are the ones who have networked in, in different spaces and they're the ones who say, I see you, come to my office or come wherever, let's work. Okay. And I also find that because my safety is a key priority for me, I have limits in terms of where I will go with a man, <laughs> which environments I will be found with men, you know. So if we're at a networking session, I won't be in a corner yeah. <laughs> with a man. I need yeah. to be in full view of everybody so people can see the interaction because we understand how people judge relationships and interactions between men and women. So yeah. unfortunately, as a woman, you do have to be more mindful, but that doesn't mean you still can't engage with certain people and get fruitful experiences out of them. I mean, I remember I once had a man, I went to, oh my God, this was actually terrible. I was speaking at an event. I was yes. on the stage. So when I'm done speaking, you go off and I speak to everybody. Right. And the guy came up to me and he's like, oh, Lebo, I think you're so beautiful. Just watching you on the stage. And I said, that's really nice, but I'd like us to talk about something more valuable than that. And he looked at me and I said, well, if you're not interested in doing that, please let me go speak to other people because this is not what I came to do. And I said it very nicely. I didn't say it in a mean way. And he said, okay, you know what? I'd like to spend more time with you. So let's talk about business. And we actually did. And we ended up working together. And he stopped that nonsense of his of coming to me and saying he's in love with me or whatever. It doesn't always happen that way. Yes. But I'm just saying, communicate your boundaries with the people because... I can tell you now to the women who are listening, if a guy comes to you and he says he likes you or he finds you attractive, nine times out of 10, he's not going to respect you in business, right? So you're wasting your time. <laughs> be with people who respect what you're there to do. Be with people who understand your boundaries. And that's kind of what I can say. But women can still meet people at the club too <laughs> and get business deals. It happens that way because you meet people, A, where you authentically flourish yes, as well. So yes. if you're happy in a space and you're comfortable, you're going to meet people who are the same in that space. Yes. And then when you meet them in an isolated space in that space like the toilet, you know, like something random. If you go to the bathroom at an event and there's another lady and she needs a tamper and you give it to her, yeah. you guys start talking. You know, so those things do happen. And when you meet people in isolation where you guys are just you're not your titles you're not anything you're yes, just two people yes. that's when you find the most authentic connection that's really quite powerful let's speak to Tabo who's been very very patient on the line hi Tabo hey, great welcome thank you uh, thank you for taking my call no I just wanted uh, some certain clarity and guidelines mm. regarding the elevator pitch in terms of it doesn't matter of what product or uh, what brand are you trying to promote, but what are the important ways one needs to utilize to get one uh, the other party's attention within maybe five five seconds uh, in terms of interaction? I just need a guideline. 
I mean, that's something, Tabo, that I think we can spend a whole hour talking about. So this is almost the elevator pitch on an elevator pitch level that you mm -hmm. need to give us to answer Tabo's question. So with an elevator pitch, the key there is to communicate your value really fast. Okay. And a lot of the time when we say communicate your value, people think we're saying, tell somebody what you do. No, tell them how you can help them. That's what we mean when we say communicate your value. Right. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is try not to use so many. I don't say I do this. Uh, uh, I rather say we or use your brand name. Upo does this. And da, 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 da. do you get what I'm trying okay. to say? So it doesn't seem too self promote ish unless you are trying to promote yourself. But people are attracted to humility. They're attracted to a conversation where it feels like it's not about the person talking where it feels like it's about them. And that's why it's a value conversation, not necessarily a me, me, me conversation, right? So those are the two things. Firstly, don't try not to use too many eyes and then communicate your value, which is how do I help you or how do I fix the problem? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily what do I do? You know what I mean? Because you can say I sell water bottles. Yeah. That's what do I do? But how do I create value is... I quench the thirst of housewives who are too busy <laughs> <laughs> to, to monitor their water yeah. consumption. I sell, uh, our, our company creates sustainable our company. packaging for yes. XYZ yes. that is available in XYZ kind of manner. Kind of, yeah. I see what you're saying. So it is also about practice then, right? It's you, practice. You've got to really collect your thoughts and think about, oh, in 30 seconds or less, this is what I'd say. Exactly. You write it down, you practice it. Yeah. Then you test it in the market. If it doesn't work, you go back home, you fix it a little bit, you go back, you test it. And it honestly takes a lot of time. You can never have a perfect elevator pitch in the first 10 times that you create one. Oh, like yeah. you need to create it and use it and create it and use it. And you find over time that people will give you feedback. So they'll say, uh, they'll ask you questions. Mm, I don't think that that solution works for me because of X, Y, Z. Then you go, ah, so they're not getting it. Let me change how I say X, Y, Z. So it's an opportunity for you to learn and refine your, your elevator pitch as well and then you'll see over time that it will just naturally come from you because you understand how it moves and works in the market topics to avoid politics mm. religion and unfortunately for women gender dynamics what do you mean so because we live in a patriarchal society a lot of men still have very outdated views on the dynamics between men and women and gender just generally. So because more men are in power than women on a regular basis, you know, on average, yeah. you find that how we've been taught now in the modern world to speak about gender dynamics. So the role of a woman and a man, uh, all of those kinds of things. A lot of the people in charge still have an old school, school view about them and they find the new way of thinking very offensive because to them, that you're attacking their in, ingrained values and how they see the world, right? If somebody says, we have a family business, they have a view of what family is. And that might not be a modern view of what family is. Sure. So you have to be careful that you're not communicating something that the other person, that infringes or offends their values. But what's interesting about that, to yeah. tie it back to what we initially spoke about, is authenticity. Exactly. And so you don't want to be working with people who have certain views necessarily. Absolutely. So you... But also, you also have to decide what you can tolerate. Yes, because yes. you'll never find a perfect, a perfect space. Absolutely. So if for you, family is a personal thing and you don't have to talk to people about it, you don't care what they say. Sure. Don't talk about no it with problem. the people because they're going to have their own view, you know, of what it is. And you guys are not going to meet when you speak about it. So I just think with politics as well, politics can ostracize you. 100%. Right. Very Everybody quickly. has a political alliance. So if you say the wrong thing, you could miss an opportunity when you guys fit in every other aspect. It's not necessary. In my opinion, I'm not saying... You know, it's the law. I'm just saying these are the safe zones. Don't talk about politics. Mm. Don't talk about the gender dynamics. Don't talk about religion. And what's the last one? I think be careful with the jokes. Okay. Some people 
say the most offensive jokes but they're not understanding the climate in the room like where they are who they're speaking to you know so they think that people will laugh but it just ends up being incredibly offensive mm. so monitor your jokes you know <laughs> practice them at home check if they're offensive <laughs> or not and then use the jokes love it how do we follow you and utilize your services level at Lebo Lion underscore SA, Lion like the animal, L I O N, on every single social media platform. Or you can go to my website, lebolion.com, and you can book my services there. Musidi says, I don't mind small talk, but please spare me from the fake smiles <laughs> and the fake laughs. laughs. Oh, no, no. We're all nervous. Yes. I think we're all nervous when we engage with people we don't know. And I think it's almost judgmental for us to expect people to show up in a way we don't know how to either. Mm -hmm. Like, you're also giving a fake smile. Like, if you really don't like it, why do you participate? <laughs> right? So you're also the problem. <laughs> like, don't judge people. Really, when you interact with people, you have to be kind. It's a dance. You know, in your yeah. mindset. You yeah. have to go, this person might be nervous, this person might be whatever. So let me be the measure. Let me set the tone and be the metronome. And you'll find that the interactions change. Fantastic conversation. We'll put this up as a podcast on power987.co.za level line. Always a pleasure chatting to you. Thank you for having me. <laughs>